Ah, that new box smell. You know what I mean. Opening up that wonderful new purchase and trying to figure out how everything goes together without breaking it. I know, setting up a new 3D printer can be really intimidating, but it doesn't have to be. In this video, I'm going to give you some general and quick tips to help you successfully get from setup to making some really awesome prints. And if you stick around to the end, I have one extra special tip to get the most out of your printer, and it just might surprise you. Well, first up, silly as it sounds, get that printer out of the box and find the instructions. And I really mean that. Find the instructions. You don't want to make mistakes here because they're just going to get you frustrated later when something doesn't work. It's complicated. And I'm also going to be giving you a few little lab rules that you need to keep in mind as we go through this. So lab rule number one, don't rush. I know you're in a hurry to get to printing, but trust me, don't skip anything. Put your printer together in the order they tell you. Every step builds upon the last one, so skipping steps may mean having to go back and undo something later. Terrible moonwalk. Don't care. And lab rule number two, don't over tighten. In other words, don't try to be a monster and tighten down those screws as hard as you can. A good rule of thumb here is to get the screws tight and then just give them a real slight little tweak. After everything's together, you're going to want to double check all the screws you can get to just to be sure. And after you've printed a few hours, go back and check them all again. Once everything's put together and you're ready to go, clear any obstructions inside and around your printer. Turn it on and be sure to watch your screen closely for updates and do them immediately. If you have a printer that doesn't have a screen, like the Anchor Make M5C, keep an eye on the app on your phone for notifications. It may be tempting to jump into printing, but you really need to run a calibration routine before you do any printing at all. This allows you and your printer to verify that everything is working properly. Sometimes, depending on the printer, this can be really completely hands-off. Other printers, though, may require you to do a little more hands-on. For the more hands-on approach, like leveling the bed, follow the instructions and don't get frustrated if things don't go right the first time or two. Leveling manually with a piece of paper, it's time-consuming and a little boring, but it's worth it. Make sure you've verified each spot multiple times before you move on to the next one. All right, so now it's time to load the filament. This is what actually makes up your print, kind of like the ink in a paper printer. You won't be getting any prints without this. We don't want that. Follow your manufacturer's instructions to load the filament and be sure it extrudes or comes out of the nozzle before you try printing anything. Lab rule number three, 3D printers get hot. The nozzle on your printer is extremely hot as well as the heat block around it. The average temp's around 200 degrees Celsius and for those of us in America, that's nearly 400 degrees Fahrenheit, so be careful. Move out, but be careful. If your printer's instructions haven't had you do it yet, look for information on how to install the slicer on your computer. And if there's an app, be sure to install that too. Take a look at both of them and get a feel for how they look and how they work. Slicing software works exactly like the name sounds. It takes the 3D model, slices it into small layers from the bottom up. Your printer lays down a line of filament the same size as a layer. And when one layer is finished, lays down another line on top of the previous one. Your slicer is most likely going to be your number one interface to your printer, although more and more manufacturers, they're putting a lot of control in the app. It's even possible that you may be able to print a lot of pre-made things straight from the app without even going to the slicer. It may be tempting to skip installing the slicer for now, but it would be worth your time to do it while you're setting everything up. As I said, it will most likely be your main interface with your printer, especially as you get more proficient with your printer. Once you have the printer and the software all up and running, now it's time to get to the fun part. Let's print something. If your printer came with files preloaded on a USB drive or the SD card, you're going to want to print some of those first. You don't have to print all the files included like I usually do. But I recommend at least printing a few different ones just to see how things print out. Regardless of where you get your files, I highly recommend your first print is the Benchy. This is probably the most printed type of model on all 3D printers, mainly because it's a really good test of your printer setup. And later, after you've learned a good bit, you'll be able to say, hey, this was my first print. My first one, first proper one. 
on your printer, USB, manufacturer website, wherever you find it, look for a file named Benchy. It'll be the one that looks like a boat, and you might be able to see that on your printer if your printer screen shows pictures. Once your Benchy's printed, look it over. You shouldn't find any strings over the windows or the portholes. The edges should be sharp, and you should be able to see at least some of the text on the bottom. And if you have a printer that can print with more than one color, um, you can try that for something even more colorful. If it didn't print all that great, or at all, don't worry, take a breath, it's okay. Remember, I mentioned earlier all this is part of a process. Before you move on, just back up to the calibration step, go through it all again. See? Process. Once you get everything calibrated and you've printed some of the files that came with your printer, if you haven't already done it, you're going to want to print some other stuff. And after all, that's really why you got this printer, right? It seems like every printer manufacturer has created their own database, and you'll definitely want to check out the one your manufacturer has for your printer. But there's so many prints out there. And just to get you started, here's a few of my favorite sites. There's things.com, makerworld.com, and now that they've started fixing some of the problems they've had, I even recommend checking out thingiverse.com. And if you want more info on all these sites with prints, keep checking out my channel, all my social sites, and my videos. And here's a little side tip for you once you start downloading a bunch of those models. Somewhere on your computer, in your documents folder or somewhere else, make one main folder and call it something like 3D prints. Then inside that folder, you might want to create some section folders, something like toys or tools and things like that. Now, inside one of those section folders, put each model in its own folder along with any notes or saved projects. And don't forget to save the URL and even a picture, if you can, of the model so you can reference this later if you need more information. Well, now that you've got your print downloaded, find the file with the extension .stl. Every slicer works a little different, but pretty much all of them allow you to drag and drop the file on the build plate. But if you have to, you can just open your slicer and then find the file, open it, or import it. Getting used to your slicer is going to take time, especially if you've never used one. Uh, they have a lot of information, but don't let it overwhelm you. You don't need all of it. For now, try leaving your settings on default. You should still get a great or at least decent print. And after a few prints, you're going to at least want to try some different quality settings labeled something along the line of fast, standard, draft, things like that. Fast and draft quality settings usually have the thickest layer lines and they print faster overall. But remember this, the faster you print, the more likely your model will be less than perfect. And sometimes it may fail altogether. <gasps> Yeah, we don't want that. Next in your slicer, look for a button or a command that says slice. Click it, wait for it to finish its calculations. You're definitely going to want to look at the overall time for the print, so you'll kind of have a general idea of how long it's going to take to print it. Then you'll need to get that print over to your 3D printer. Now the file you'll be saving is going to have a really strange extension to most of you, and that's .gcode. This file has all the instructions for your 3D printer to tell it everything from how fast to print, uh, how much filament to use, where exactly on the build plate to go, and lots more stuff. And once you get the file onto your printer and you've got it printing, now you can just sit back, wait for those prints to appear on the build plate. And for all you beginners to 3D printing, I have one last lab rule and reminder. Don't start a print and walk away. Everybody has failed prints from time to time, and catching it early so you can stop the printing process, it's going to save you a lot of time, money, and frustration. And don't forget that your nozzle gets really hot, so if something really crazy happens, it's not outside the realm of possibility that it could cause a fire. So, hey, be careful out there. I want you to be really careful out there. And remember earlier when I said I had one last extra special tip for you? Well, I'm going to tell you what I told my father when he got his first computer many, many, many years ago. Just do it. And for you and your 3D printer, I'm going to add this. Print anything and everything you can and you want to print. The reason we all have so many 3D toys and stuff around is because when we were learning, the more we printed, the more we knew. And people were amazed, so, you know, that helps too. If you have any questions or problems that you can't find an answer to, leave them in the comments or hit us up on our social sites. The awesome 3D printing community is always here to help. Please hit like and subscribe to help us out here on our channel as we keep helping you to learn, create, and amaze.